Good morning everyone, right, so today I am going to pick up Jasper for the Easter holidays and I'm also going to be talking about airships because, you know, there's a dream of truly green travel, air travel, that has just not been realised yet. Yes, there are talks of sort of hybrid engines and stuff like that, but it always seems a long way in the future and or not happening at all. See, the, the dream is floating air transport. You know, that's what you see in Star Wars and Star Trek and Star everything else too. You know, it, it's always anti-gravity technology or whatever. It's you know, something that makes it float. And then, of course, if it was to just float, it'd be a lot more efficient to sort of make the thing move along. So is that possible with real physics? Well, probably the closest thing really to floating would be something that actually floats, like a hot air balloon, or in this case, an airship. But why is it that airships have never taken off, forgive the pun? Well, in this video, we are going to explore what sort of technologies could make something float and how realistic they are. But first, I've got about 130 miles of driving to do. Right, got Jasper now. He's getting bigger, isn't he? It's crazy. So airships have been a topic that I've sort of wondered about many times because it's quite a sci-fi look, isn't it? I mean, you know, like for example in the new Dune, you know, where you've got the sort of Sardaukar come in with their sort of airship-like things or the, um, the, the, the flying thing that takes the sand crawlers away also kind of seemed vaguely airship-esque. And also I recently saw an article on BBC News about uh, the Airlander airship and how it's apparently going to maybe be employing 1,200 people, which is cool. And uh, yeah, it's sort of just got me thinking about it. And why hasn't it done better? It's an old subject. It's, you know, the, the idea of an airship has been around for ages. So I mean, one of the things that has always puzzled me is why don't they just make an airship that is a bit heavier than air, but not a lot heavier than air and then just use like some electrical ducted fans or something to sort of give it the little bit of extra lift that it needs because you know if the aircraft only weighed 20% as much as it does then obviously something like a drone that weighed only 20% but for the full size power would be a really capable machine that could travel quite long distances and, and, and would also still have the ability to land and take off vertically just like a, a helicopter or something along those lines. So no, that sounds like a good idea, right? Except there's one small problem with it. Yeah, I mean, when I thought about it, it was kind of obvious, really. I'm not using the right mic. Unbelievable. Bear with me. I also wasn't using the right camera, so there you go. Now I've fixed my setup right for back to the office. So I, I use a GoPro when I'm out and about, but when I'm in the office, I, I try to use better cameras and audio and stuff because, you know, better. Anyway. On with the airship thing. Right, so the fundamental problem here is that if you make the, if, if you sort of save 20% of the volume of the, the gas that you need, then in order to make the vehicle lighter than air, so you're just going to have like the, you know, it'd be 20% heavier than air, if that makes sense. The, the problem is you're only reducing the volume a tiny amount, so the actual vehicle doesn't really shrink very much and then you've got to do a lot more work in order to actually lift and move the thing. It just doesn't, it's one of those things that seems like a nice idea because you think, oh yeah, if we could make the balloon half the size and have it just be something that aids rather than on its own makes the whole thing float, then surely that would that would make loads of sense. It, it's just that to reduce the volume by half doesn't actually make the balloon that much smaller because of the way volumes work. So yeah, unfortunately that wouldn't be a goer. Uh, let's just take a little sort of segue actually now and just talk about some of the potential alternatives to actually filling a, a bag with a lighter than air gas like helium or hydrogen. So chief amongst the alternatives would be the, the stalwart of the Star Trek and Star Wars you know, in environments, which is uh, anti-gravity. Anti-gravity is also known by another name in the industry, and that is magic. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Although, it, you, you could, if you had something that would sort of block out the effects of gravity, then 
you could balance that blocking, so not 100% blocking, versus the centrifugal force of the Earth spinning, which is trying to sort of throw us off the surface and achieve a, a, a nice sort of floaty kind of midway point. The, the problem is we can't block out gravity. We don't really have a, a properly firm understanding of it. It's described not so much as a force, but more a, a curvature to the space you know to space time which is yeah we're, we're not going to be doing that anytime soon as far as i can tell which is a shame but yeah not realistic another way to make things float is magnetic lav levitation i'm almost said lavitation hmm funny that so basically there are some real key problems with magnetic levitation as a way to make things float uh the chief among them being that you need to run on a on a surface that is magnetic so yeah i mean it's not you know magnetic levitation is not going to make you levitate above the earth so it's yeah unfortunately that one is a little impractical although i did see a really cool like magnetic levitation skateboard thing that could only work in specifically designed skate parks and it seemed really difficult but pretty like pretty cool nonetheless and the, the skateboard had super superconductant um sort of liquid nitrogen chilled superconductors on the underside of it it was it, it was quite an interesting piece of kit one place that magnetic levitation could work potentially is in something like a hyper hyperloop tube where you don't want any friction between you and the ground and you've sucked all the air out to remove all the friction of the air and therefore in theory you would be able to go really really quickly without actually consuming very much energy to do that the problem with that sort of thing is one of the, the the sort of classic problems that hold things back and one of the reasons why i think you're more likely to see flying cars than you are to see magnetically levitating cars going down a road and the problem with that is that the uh, infrastructure cost to to put something like that in would cost an absolute fortune it would be absolutely ruinous that's that's what holds a lot of these things back you know hyperloop even even delivering power from a road to an electric vehicle as it goes along wirelessly or even with some kind of tether which would be a great way to give your electric vehicle infinite range the problem is just to put a mile of ordinary road in costs like ordinary motorway costs something like i think it might be as high as 100 million pounds but it's a gargantuan amount of money nonetheless you know maybe it's not quite that much maybe it's 10 million pounds but it's a huge amount of money and we're just talking about ordinary tarmac here with some drainage compared to building a hyperloop a vacuum sealed tube yeah <laughs> uh, whereas you see with a flying car if you could actually make the car fly the infrastructure would be fairly straightforward and limited to an advanced air traffic control and deconfliction system but it would be relatively you could put something like that in for like a hundred million with some industry buy-in so it's not beyond the the realms of possibility it's just the actual making the car fly bit that's the difficult thing anyway back to airships so the very first airship was created by a guy called Henry Gifford in, I think it was 1852. This initial airship that was created by Henry Gifford was actually powered by a three horsepower steam engine. Now, the fact that you can make a steam engine fly with a big bag of hydrogen is, it tells you everything you need to know about lighter than air aircraft and their efficiency because steam engines are not that efficient and their power to weight ratio is appalling. It's worth noting that this particular airship had the uh, extremely fast speed of six miles an hour, but on the upside, it could cover a sort of 20 odd mile journey. Whereas you look at the first heavier than air powered flight with the Wright brothers and they made it like a football pitch. You know, they did go quicker, but much, much shorter distance to begin with. So how come airships aren't going anywhere? Well, chief amongst their issues is the fact that they are not that fast to say the least and on top of that they're not that resistant to the weather you know they're it's a it's a big balloon so that's a lot of surface area and 
a moderate to strong wind, something that an airplane could handle relatively easily would be beyond the limits of an aircraft. So like, you know, when I fly drones, an easy way to understand approximately what kind of wind your drone can handle is if the, if the drone can fly along at 30 odd miles an hour, then it'll probably be okay dealing with a sort of 20 to 25 mile an hour wind. Obviously you've got to bear in mind things like the wind getting faster, the higher up you go. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying you just take your drone out in heavy winds, not a good idea. It still is much easier and better, but you get the, you get the idea, right? If the wind is doing 30 miles an hour, then to stay stationary above the ground, you've got to fly 30 miles an hour. Same thing with an airship. So if the airship can only do 30 miles an hour, you're going to need some serious, you know, ser serious motor power to, to drive that thing upwind. Also, there's been a bit of a reputational issue when it comes to airships ever since the Hindenburg blew up. Um, yeah, filling it with hydrogen, not a good idea. I mean, hydrogen, I'm not a big fan of hydrogen. You probably already know that. Well, it, it doesn't work for airships much better than it works for anything else that isn't an upper stage of a rocket. And also you do have cost as well. I mean, helium is an expensive gas. For balance, on the upsides, they are very efficient because they don't have to lift their own weight. So you can run them on sort of electric motors and a smallish battery and, and go a ridiculously large distance for really quite minimal amount of energy. I'm not including the energy required to get the helium, of course, because you know that would require quite a lot of energy, although presumably you don't need to refill the helium every trip. But obviously some will leak out and you will need to maintain that system. But yeah, efficiency is the trump card for airships. I did really like the way in Dune the Sardaukar sort of used these airship things. Or was it the um the Harkonnens actually that, that had them? I'm not sure both. But anyway, that sort of the, the airship thing looked quite cool. But it looked quite cool because the balloons on the side of their ships were like way tiny, you know, and um they they're not gonna it's gonna make no difference. On an aircraft in Earth, having that filled with helium would make uh, uh, a difference that probably wouldn't account for the extra material required to encase the balloon. <laughs> Still, I will be watching the Airlander story develop over time and I, I hope they do well and they get to employ 1200 people building these things. That would be amazing, obviously. Always good to hear that sort of thing. And uh, if I ever go down to that end of the country, I'll have to try and drop in and see if I can catch a, a sight of the thing because I I like the idea and the sort of the something that floats is very sci-fi and cool and something that is very energy efficient as a way to get about I think is great but I think the truth is just as it sort of worked until something better came along back in the sort of latter part of the 19th century I think it's probably you know never going to be a better solution than even a you know a small electric plane or something which we are getting closer and closer to making a reality and obviously for the larger planes you've got more of a hybrid setup which actually is is a very good idea i think that's going to do quite well it won't eliminate the emissions from plane travel but it will alleviate the problem you know i don't think i've ever actually seen an airship in real life other than the sort of like the blimp things that advertise stuff that you see you know, above garages sometimes and stuff like that. But other than that, I've never seen a sort of passenger carrying one. I'll um, have to keep my eyes open for one. Right, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it fun and interesting. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I will see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.